The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. This season at McMillan has been brought to you by Browning, the best there is. Hooray Grill Company, time well spent. Um, how many fish do you think I'm going to catch? Zero. And how many do you think I'm going to, how many? Uh, how, zero. How, how many do you think you're going to catch? Six. How many, how many do you think my dad's going to catch? I think Boom will catch more fish than you will. <laughs> I ain't nothing but a country boy. I ain't nothing but a country boy. I ain't nothing but a country boy. I'll be a country boy the rest of my day. For the rest of my day I ain't nothing but a country boy I'll be a country boy the rest of my day It's now the middle of November. The whitetail are in full rut. Clients in and out of camp. As busy as it is here, this week in Oklahoma, it's usually even just a little bit busier. We're going back to Oklahoma. Buckle up. So it's the middle of November, and this is a trip that if you know me very well at all, you know that I'm not going to miss. Oklahoma, hogs and whitetail, bows, guns, friends, family. Welcome. I think he's going to open it. What do you think it is? Watercolors. No. What is the first and foremost most important rule of being a good hunting client? Butter up your host. No chaps. No. It's got to be genuine though. We can smell a schmoozer a long way away. Root 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 root. No. I'll, talk, I'll talk to you later. Bring good gifts. Get on your guide's good side. One spur. Yeah, he's, he's already got this down pat. Uh, what is this? Is it Christmas ornaments? My favorite. I can already tell you, I don't even know what the others are. That's my favorite. No, I take it back. This is my favorite. Thank you, buddy. I love it. My man. <gasps> anyway, we got the gift giving out of the way. Ready? Yes. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. First afternoon, we got to the stand. Like I said, as you would imagine, everybody is eager, gung-ho, and trigger happy. I saw nothing, literally nothing. Some wind, like I saw a bird. But that's pretty much all I have to say about the first outing, the first afternoon. But the next morning was morning number one, and just like last year, morning number one, for me, was turning out to be pretty exciting. The next morning was morning number one, and just like last year, morning number one, for me, was turning out to be pretty exciting. We had one deer right below the stand when we were trying to get to the tree stand. He just eased off. He saw us. He turned and looked right at still see him over there, but he's going away. Didn't blow, didn't... didn't run off with his tail up or anything, so we're like, okay, we're good. But then after that, it was pretty quiet for a while, and you're thinking, man, maybe it's one of those days. <laughs> We'd been there about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, and Blake had spotted a pretty good buck to our west. And it's funny, because this is why communication between the cameraman and the hunter can be pretty important. I just assumed, when I looked to the west and finally picked out a big buck that was coming right at us, that that was the one that my cameraman Blake was talking about. No, he didn't see him. It wasn't until I heard him click the LCD screen on the camera close and say, well, I guess he's walking away, and I'm going, no, 
uh, he's not walking away. <laughs> he's about 75 yards on a beeline coming right at us. So by the time Blake turns the camera back on, expletive, expletive, this deer is 65 yards and closing in. And he's committed. We hadn't rattled, we hadn't grunted, we hadn't called, nothing. We were, we were sitting over some corn, hasn't smelled us yet, isn't gonna skirt us to go behind us into the wing. I'm thinking, good grief, here I am again. Just like last year, two hours into the first morning, and here's my opportunity. And I'm more than happy to take it, because that's me. Try to get him to stop, nothing. Doesn't act like even. Here's it. I mean, I'm, I'm back to the point of a whistle, 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 yell. I'm, I'm almost to that point of the, hey! As soon as I let the arrow fly, one thing breaks all my concentration. It's not the buck jumping away. It's not that light of knock burying behind the shoulder. It's one little bitty twig between me and the buck going. Boing, 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 boing. Right Hit a limb. Miss him completely. Not good. It's pretty quiet too, so he's heard everything by now. Still, he, he has no idea what's going on, but he, he knows something isn't right. He hasn't left yet, so okay. Get a range, he's like 45 yards. Shot number two, he ducks the string. First shot, twang, 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 boom, right under him. Second shot, right over him. This is really starting to make me look stupid. Err. I could hear Blake throwing up by this point. But guess what? He hasn't smelled us. He's heard things. Two missiles. And this is the beauty of hunting deer that aren't pressured. He acts a little bit curious. He wants to know what's going on with this pecan tree out in the middle of nowhere. The sucker turns and starts angling towards us again. Knock another one. He's getting to where he's getting out of my shot window. If I don't let one fly in the next two steps, I might have to send one through Blake's legs to be able to get him shot. And right when I need him to, he stops. You know, you give me enough chances, and I'm gonna make a hell of a shot. Gee, but Christmas. Well, that was torture. Oh, thank the good Lord for unpressured deer. There's still some out there. What a freaking fiasco. <laughs> I let Blake, you know, badmouth me about how dumb I was for the first two shots, how much I sucked. Hope I didn't just burn three years worth of luck all in the same deer. Your lesson for the day is never give up. <laughs> Miss him once, knock another arrow. Miss him twice, knock another arrow. That's the lesson, bring lots of arrows. You go get the troops, gather up everybody, get Gatlin back at the lodge, you come back and get me. Here comes the troops. Um, this pasture's rough and rocky, so I knew we were gonna have to have some help. And, you know, this is a first class operation. Blake's got a few toys. The smallest mule he could find. Oh, look, it's a mini go-kart. Did a girl scout get in a poker game and lose her cart to Blake? You'd think I'd learn. <clears throat> anyway, thank you again, Oklahoma. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Lord, for three shots. Okay, he's a pretty decent guide. Decent. You're afraid of a crossbow? Yes. Why? It's because it looks scary, is it? No. You're not afraid of it? It might look scary to a deer or a hog. Your face does. <laughs> yes! The most beautiful thing about tagging out the first morning is that the first afternoon I get to take my kid to chase hogs. Gatlin's packing the crossbow. Can you hold it if you had a shooting stick and shoot it? Let's find out. Where'd I hit it? It works. He can get it done. About to hit right in the center because I think it pushed through. 
shot right through the center of the circle. Do you reckon? If it did, I'd be amazed. Right to where I was aiming? Well, why are you so surprised you hit where you was aiming? I just am so surprised. Oh, oh wow. 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 Nice. That's a Holy guacamole. Is that a dead hog? No, that's a block target. Let's roll. Let's yeah. roll, Biscuit. I'm not a biscuit, you're a biscuit. That's a biscuit roll. And the situation that we got into was so rare. I heard hogs out there. Not only are we sneaking in on a hog, but we're able to sneak in on about 60 of them. There's a bunch out there, and there's a bunch out there. Come here. The setup for getting to the stand and, and getting into the food plot was just perfect. We, were, we could be in the shadows. We still had a clear shot at the food plot. The wind was in our face, and there was so much chaos going on out there. Two big groups of hogs met on the corn pile. I mean, you could tell there were old sows fighting with other old sows. There were boars fighting with other boars. There were boars breeding sows. They were doing everything out there in that field but hitting a pinata. Let me try to get you just a little bit closer if we can. Every step we took, I could just tell that it was getting almost easier to get closer and closer and closer. You see that, that darkest one that's a broadside? Mm -hmm. Can you see him in your scope? Or we can wait. I'm not going to rush you because they don't even know we're here. How about that great big one in the middle? You know, he's back in there a ways. He's scaring everything off. Yeah. He got mad. I think we'll get broadside here in a second. Dude. That one right there was playing hide the carrot. What'd he say? That one right there was playing hide the carrot. It's official. My kid is officially hunted with Blake Shelton too much. Be, be serious now. Be looking at through your scope, because they're not going to be here forever. Yeah, I'm going to hear about that one from Grandma. OK, I see one. OK, yep, I see one. I'm going to shoot him, OK? We, one stand on broadside long enough to give him a, a, a legit good safe shot, right? OK, right now? Yep, I'm kind of ready. Dad, did I hit one? I don't know, bud. He shoots. Everything runs off. It's like scattering a covey of quail, right? I think you probably did, but I'm, I'm not 100% for sure. We'll have to look at the footage. The reason that I thought that he hit one is that the commotion that they made, you know, the squealing that went on. I swear I hit one. I swear I did. Yeah, we would have liked to have seen one gone out there 30 yards and spun around, but it didn't happen. Let's get up in our stand. Get ready, because there's probably going to be more come out. And there's bucks coming in. On the move. Everything's moving. Before long, we see one, another black hog by himself. Goes across the food plot. Before we know it, here comes another black hog. I'm like, OK. This one, he's a little bit closer to us. He's coming to the food plot. I think I can tell where he's trying to find the corn. Gatlin's ready. He's already forgotten about what did or what did not happen on the spot and stock. We're cranked in. If anything, he's pretty focused by this point. He's like, I don't know if I missed that first time, but I'm not going to miss this time. Anytime you're ready, just peace. What happened? Did I hit him? Once again, he did everything right. Let that bolt fly. I think I caught it ricocheting off the ground with my eye somewhere. I didn't know what happened. The thing that got me excited is as we see this hog exiting the food plot, he's slowing down, walking a little bit slower, a little bit slower. Not looking like he's feeling very good, right? I, I did see where it, right where it went into the woods, so we'll go look for blood. It isn't very long till dark. I'm like, you know what? If that hog's hit, we'll find him tomorrow. If he's not hit, so wet. We'll keep hunting till we hit them all. That second one you got. So we go in the next morning and we, we get there 45 minutes before we can see anything because I don't think Gatlin slept. We get halfway over to the timber. It's dead, dead. That's blood all over it. Mm -hmm. We're going right to where I marked the hog going in. And as soon as we get to the timber, perfect blood trail. He didn't go into that timber very far at all. He's dead. 
Now, if that's not a beautiful trophy pick, what is? Things are looking pretty good on this trip. First day ended up being a total success. Good job. Thank you. Good shooting. Thank you. Let's not forget about Jackie. Jackie's got the bow on her hand, the tag in her pocket, decent guide. We've got to check in on her and see how her day's going. Got me a professional guide this time. So, no offense, Jeff, because we do have good luck together. So now it's my turn to, to go hunt with Blake on a given evening and had no idea what, what we were in store for. There's this one spot that Blake has that he calls the water wheel house, and it's a, it's a huge field that is just like a zoo. There was dozens and dozens of deer out on this field, and here from the left come a great buck. I mean, a nice, nice deer. And I was prepped and I was ready and it could draw at any moment, but it just never got right. It was, it was never broadside, never really stopped, kind of skirted out maybe further than my 25, 30 yard range that I'm comfortable with. And so I just never took an opportunity at that deer. And then after the fact, I was questioning myself. I was like, Blake, tell me, did I miss my opportunity? Did I, was there a shot? And he's like, no, I wouldn't have done it either. You're good. But just hold, hold, hold on, hang tight. You'll have another shot. Shortly after that deer, here come a single hog. You know, they make a person's heart beat just as fast and hard as a deer. Have you ever actually felt your heart beat, you know, through your chest? That gets you pretty energized. After I shot that first hog, we hear this huge rustle, all this big group coming in, and one stood out like you wouldn't believe. It looked like a big Russian boar. It just stood a foot taller than the rest of them with a great big bushy neck, and it was just, he was like, oh, okay. So, do you see, do you, do you know which one I'm talking about when I'm saying the biggest Russian boar? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, so I really would like that one um, mounted in my lodge. Do you think you can make this happen? You know what you want, right? left in my quiver. Wouldn't you know, here comes another hog. This is the third hog. And I sling one at it. And hit it as well. God, you think that you killed the giant. Here comes another hog. This would have been uh, a fourth hog, and I only have one arrow left. I declined that shot, which was a great idea. Only 20 minutes later, here come another great big buck coming from that same direction. Can I just say that I'm proud to have been a part of the greatest hunting night of all time? Empty my quiver. No, I'm empty. Are you kidding me? Wow. Are you kidding me? I know a thousand percent what that shot is. I thought I'd made a really good shot on it, but then I turned and looked back at Blake, and he was like, yeah, well, I don't know. And he's like, but you, we are going to welcome you to the Femoral Artery Club. 
I'm sorry, I'm making a decision. I don't think it matters at this point. Look at that, lady. Oh, beautiful. I absolutely love it. A hunt like that for Jackie means the world to me because she got to have one of those afternoons like I've had several times here. Yeah. Uh, just filled with excitement and ending with success. <laughs> she shot every arrow in her quiver. Every one of them's bloody. Ooh. Oh. You're seeing your kid go through the trials and tribulations and a true hunt of spotting and stalking up on a group of hogs, shooting one, getting his wits about him again, getting gathered up, shooting another one. Yeah, I flubbed up twice and finally got my deer killed on the third shot. But all these things, it's, that's, you know, we're hunting, man, and we're enjoying every second of it, breathing it all in and appreciating every single ounce. Hang with me. This was only part one. Tomorrow opens up rifle season. You ready? Stay tuned. Uh, I guess I'll just come up first.